Hey everybody, welcome to our video on writing and reading sequential files with Microsoft Access VBA. In this video we're going to use the print pound and line input pound statements. We're going to write with the print pound and then we'll read with the line input pound. I recently did a video where we used the write pound statement to write data to a file and we used the input pound statement to read from it. I'm going to use much the same VBA as we did in that last video, so I'm not going to go over as much of the VBA in this video as I did in the other ones. I don't want to you repeat myself and bore those who've seen the other video. So if you want to see that video, it is called Writing and Reading Sequential Files with Microsoft Access VBA. And at the bottom it says Write Pound and Input Pound. I'll have a link to that video in the description below. So let's head over to a form I built for this. This form looks almost exactly like the form in the previous video where we used the write and the input statements. At the top, we've got a button that allows us to choose the folder we want to put our new file in. I'm going to choose the test rights folder. And so we display the folder there. And here's a field where we type in the name of the file we'd like to create. Below here is the four fields of data we want to write to our file. I'm going to put a one for our ID. I'm going to put Jack for last name, Captain for first name. Let's say 824 Before we press the print button and create our file, let's take a look at the VBA behind that button. At the top here, I've got the VBA behind the folder pick button, and we're not going to go through that because I've gone through it so many times before. I'll have a link to the, in the description down below also to a, a video I did on using the file dialog box and access. And here is the VBA behind our print button. Just like in the other video, we're going to start off making sure that all of our data on our form is filled in. We want to make sure that the folder we want the file to go to is filled in and the name of the folder is filled in as well as all of our data elements are filled in. So at the top, we're making sure our folder and our file name are filled in. If they're not, we're going to give our users the message box telling them to enter a file or folder name. If any of our IDs, our last name, or first name is not filled in, we're going to give them a message. Again, they need to be filled in. If our ID is not numeric, we're going to give them a message and tell them to go make it numeric. The ID does not have to be numeric. I'm just doing that for this example. I want it to be numeric for this example. Below that, the day of birth. Of course, I want that to be a date. And if it's not, again, give them a message and tell them to fix it. Below that, we want to create a full path to the file name that we want to create by concatenating the folder and the slash and then the file name from our form. Save it in the variable called file name. We get our first available, we get our next available file number from the, file, the system using the free file function. We'll store that in this variable called file number. And then we're going to open our file name that we just built for append as, and then there's our file number. I'm going to use append again because if the file does not exist, it will create the file for us and then let us write to it. If the file does already exist, any write statements we have after this will simply add records to it. And then below there, we're going to use our print statement. Print, pound, file num, comma, followed by a string. The print takes a string as input. It's not going to format it for you in any way. It's, it's, it's formatted um, in a display format, if you will. So you won't get any delimiters. You won't get any quotes or pound signs around dates or strings. It's just the data all by itself. So let's save this. Let's head over to our form and click the print button. Now let me pull up the file it just created. Of course it opens on the other screen. That a little bit too small to see, isn't it? Let's make it a little bit bigger. It's not much better, is it? There we go. So move it over a little bit see one but nothing in between jack nothing in between captain nothing in between it just gives you a string back over to the VBA I also want to point out that I've got semicolons between each variable commas will also work here this print statement takes a string so it can take a single variable with multiple fields that have been appended into it it'll take multiple fields delimited by commas or semicolons. Now let's take a look at reading a file that's been written 
using the print pound. That is going to be done by this line input button right here and we're going to write out our individual fields to this text field. And here's the VBA for the read button. I'm going to clear out our text results field. Text results is the big text box at the bottom here that's going to show the data we pulled back from the file. And clear it out before we start. Again, we want to find the file name we're going to open. So again, we're going to build it the same way we did before by concatenating our folder from the form with a file name from the form and storing it in there. Again, we're going to get the next available file number from the system and store it in file num. And we're going to open our file name for input as, and there's our file number. Now, I've only got one record in this file, but we don't know that when we write this code, it, it could have multiple records. So we're going to build a do while loop, do while and loop to loop through all the records that are in the file. We're going to do while this is not at the end of file for the file number that we retrieved from the system. Inside here we have the line input statement. We give it the file number and a comma and we give it a variable to receive the entire line. When you use the line input, it gives you the entire line in one shot. It doesn't, doesn't allow you to parse it out here on this input statement like the input statement did. The input statement allowed us to line up our variables in this string right here and it would parse it out for us all in the all in the input statement. This the line input statement does not do that. We get the entire line as one string. So what we're going to do here is write out that string to our text results box. Click say let's click our button and there we go. It looks just like the file that we built. It's just the same string, not parsed or anything. Now for that reason, if I wanted to get at the individual data elements within this record, I probably would not use print pound and line input pound. I would use the write pound and the input pound because it's going to separate out these variables for you automatically. I would use the print pound for things like logs or error logs, reporting on activity, things like that. Things that just would require us to spit out a string to a file that users would then come back later and read. But if we're going to process off of it, I probably would use the, the write pound and input pound. However, not wanting to, to, to take the easy road, I want to push the print pound and line input pound just a little bit and see if we can get at the individual data within them, and, and we certainly can. So we're going to run back up here to our VBA for the for the pound, and we're going to add some more code down here. Do a copy, paste. Let's comment this. Uncomment this. Now what I've got here is again a print pound file number, same thing, same fields, text ID, last name, first name, and DOB. But this time, in addition to the semicolon delimiter between the fields, I've added a vertical pipe. So I'm basically going to, to add a delimiter to the print record itself. Now why did I choose the vertical pipe instead of the comma? If you remember correctly in the in the right pound video, right pound automatically adds a comma to your record for you in between your variables. And then when you use the input pound, it parses that record for you based on where those commas are. Now the reason I don't want to use a comma this time is, let's take a look at our file again. Okay, here's our file. Notice we have a string here, and that's last name, another string, that's first name, and then we have a DOB. They are not delimited in any way. Okay, there are no there are no double quotes around each field, around each string. There are no pounds around the dates. So what if one of the fields you're working with here comes from your database and it is a field where your users are allowed to write in freeform text. They write they type in some sentences. Well, you know that someone is going to use a comma in a sentence. I mean, most everybody uses commas in sentences. In the right pound, when they put a double quote around here and double quote around here, the input pound knows it can ignore commas that are inside the quotes because that's part of the string. 
but if we don't have double quotes to tell it that that's a string, it's not going to know whether this comma is part of the data or a comma that's supposed to be denoting the end of one field and the start of another field. So if you have a comma in your comment and you have another comma here, meaning it's the end of the string, it's not going to the difference and it's going to mess up. You're going to blow up your, your parse. Okay. So when we're using the print statement, I'm going to use the vertical pipe because I have never seen anybody use a vertical pipe in an ordinary sentence that they write. That's a pretty safe character to use as a delimiter. Let me close this file now. Uh, yeah, okay. In fact, we need to delete that file. Imagine me deleting it right now. It's off screen. So let's save this and let's write again to our file. And now, pull it up, and this is what we got. ID, vertical pipe, jack, vertical pipe, captain, vertical pipe, date of birth. Now let's modify our read statement to deal with the vertical pipes. And what we're going to do here is basically we're just going to parse. We're going to read. We use our same line input statement, okay? And we're going to receive the entire string and this string line input variable. But then we're going to parse it out into its individual fields. I need to uncomment these guys. All right, so. We're going to use, we're going to take, we've got another variable up here I've done, de defined as a variant. I think it'll also work as an array, string line array. We're setting it equal to using the split function on our variable that we filled on a line and in line input, and we're telling it we want it to just split this into an array wherever you see the vertical pipe. And then we simply load our array elements into fields that we can use into, of, of the proper data type. Now literally, now I'd point out we don't have to do this. We could simply get away, get away with it. Instead of doing this, do string line array zero and put it where int ID is going to be. But for the sake of clarity, I'm going to move array element number one, number zero, the first element in the array, to int ID. We know it's the energy, we know it's the ID. The second one is the last name. The third one is the first one first name and the fourth one is the DOB. And we have the same write statements here to our text results box that we have before. Our int ID, our ID equals int ID, last equals string last, etc. Let's head back over to our form and click the line input button. And there you go. So we have taken a string variable, we've parsed it based on a character that we've put in the file and separate it into uh, individual data elements or variables. So basically we have manually done what the input pound statement does for us. The input pound statement parses the input record for us. We have read in the entire input record as a single variable or single string variable and parsed it ourselves using the split command. So that's it for this video. In this video we wrote data to a file using the print pound statement and that wrote a unformatted string for us even though it had individual variables concatenated together and then we used the line input statement to read that same data from the text file we created we first read it in as one long string and displayed that and then after that we manually parsed it ourselves using the the pipe character as a delimiter between variables as usual, I have a link to the code listing in the description down below, as well as the other videos I mentioned. I hope you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.